You know, it's not uncommon for us to have absolutely no idea what the next big update's gonna be. Last year, Jungle Inferno was an incredibly rare exception where we actually knew a lot of what to expect ahead of time. We knew there would be Pyro stuff, we knew there would be a jungle theme, we knew there would be a Source Filmmaker short, and we knew what a good chunk of the balance changes were gonna be before they happened. We almost never know that much. In fact, no, we never, we never know that much. Usually, the only thing we sorta know is generally when the update's gonna come out. Well, we used to. The two biggest, most important updates of the year would usually come out around late June or early July and about a week before Christmas. Now, that's not always been the case. In early years, they were spread out throughout the year a little bit more, and in more recent years, they've dropped big updates at other times. But if we're talking the, the, the modern era, which is like, I don't know, post-free-to-play, then yeah, it's been early summer and then in December. The summer update is usually the biggest one. Even if there is a major update around Christmas, it's usually not quite as big. And every year has had at least one big summer update. Well, except for one. Last year. Also 2007, but the game came out in October, so uh, I'll give it a pass. Just this one time. 2008 saw the original Pyro update in June, which included major reworks to the class, new weapons, and the first ever community maps. Okay, technically this wasn't in summer, but... Basically. August of 2008 also had the original Heavy update, which brought new heavy weapons and arena mode. Whatever that is. The biggest update for the first half of 2009 was actually in May, but in August we did get the Classless update which brought new hats and King of the Hill. In 2010 we got the final of the original Class updates with the Engineer update coming out in early July. Though this one is kind of overshadowed by the massive Manconomy update that came out at the end of September. 2011 saw TF2's biggest and arguably most important update with the Uber update. Then they added the Dr. Gordbort Soldier Pack about a month after that, and then the Mano Techno Weapons about a month after that. 2012 was Pyromania, the Triad Pack, and Man vs. Machine. By 2013, we settled on more of a current-ish style of updates. Which unfortunately means no more multiple major updates in one summer. 2013's summer update, despite being pretty good, was never given a real name and consisted almost entirely of balancing and fixes. 2014 had Love and War, which also didn't technically come out in summer. 2015 had Gun Metal, and 2016 had Meet Your Match. I believe that there was evidence to suggest that Jungle Inferno was intended to be a summer update for 2017. Something about calling it a summer campaign, or something along those lines in the files. Look into that, future me. But regardless of whether it was planned or not, 2017 was the first year without a major summer update. Like 2013 being the first year without new weapons, and 2013 being the first year without a real Christmas update. The not-so-great milestones. But we have gotten new weapons since then, and we have gotten big winter updates too, so it's not exactly the end of the world. In fact, 2013 as a whole was not the most exciting year. Like I said before, the summer update that year was never even given a name. It's not even mentioned on the history part of the TF2 website. And it also didn't really add a whole lot of new stuff. Okay, there were a lot of new hats, a lot of them, and two community maps, but it also had a ton of fixes and some decent balancing. Big new gimmicks and introducing a whole bunch of new stuff is great, but I don't know if that should always be the main focus. Gunmetal was one of my favorite recent-ish updates, and while I did add skins and a campaign thing, the real draw there was the fixes and balancing. I remember talking with my friend about it and not being super impressed until actually reading the patch notes. Before that update, Heavy basically had no good primary unlocks. And now he has... one! And it was the gunmetal update that made it that way. That update also buffed the Natasha and the Brass Beast, but they were... they were nerfed a year later. And I'm still mad about it. Speaking of which, it's likely that at some point we'll be getting a Heavy-themed update. The original Day 2 blog post for the Meet Your Match update claimed it was highly likely that both Pyro and Heavy would be getting an update, and that the whole war was basically just for who got it first. I'd like to think they at least had a basic idea of what they would have done if Heavy had won, but... No, I, I don't buy it either. Day 3 for Jungle Inferno did mention the war again, but it only really mentions that Pyro had won, and that's why he's getting new stuff. And also that everybody wins but Heavy. Hey, that's been like a theme of the game for a while now. And notice how they cut the part about adding new achievements in their own quote of themselves. I see what you did. Anyway, I guess it's kind of likely that the next big update will feature Heavy stuff, but I'm personally kind of doubtful. Because Valve hates Heavy. Okay, I'll stop. While we have yet to get the big update for this year, we did have a fairly decent start to 2018. The Nameless Competitive update came out in March, and it was great. Even though that update was almost universally well-received, 
it doesn't seem like it's regarded as a major update. I'd say that it was probably on par with something like the Hatless update from 2011, or close to the Summer update for 2013. A lot of good fixes, improvements to matchmaking, some balancing, and some hats. If the update was given an actual update page, like something like the Hatless update, and was given a proper name, I don't think anybody would think twice about calling it a major update. Presentation and the amount of hype brought to something can have a pretty major impact. But still, we got a biggish update in spring. The last time that actually happened was in 2011. You know, a lot of people look back fondly on the good old days when major updates were more common, but it was really a mixed bag. Let me just put it this way, balance updates didn't really become a thing or expected until 2012. And 2011 added a whole lot of not so well balanced weapons. I think as a whole, the balancing for the Jungle Inferno update was decent, though they did put a big focus on nerfing and rebalancing weapons banned in community competitive. And that's fine, as long as it's done well. But buffing bad weapons to the point where they're actually good is always going to be more fun. Making the reserve shooter complete trash on Pyro just probably means that most people won't use it until it's changed again. But making a previously bad weapon good, not too good, but good, opens up a lot of possibilities and different ways to play. It's going to have an impact on the game even three months after the updates come out. Personally, I look forward to those kind of balance changes more than almost anything at this point. Jungle Inferno was also the first big update since Meet Your Match, and Meet Your Match was kind of a disaster. There was probably a fair amount of pressure to make sure the next update was well done. But as of the Blue Moon Spring update of this year, they've more or less worked out everything wrong with the matchmaking system. Well, mostly, I'm not really sure what else they could do. The whole matchmaking system started out pretty bad, but I think they've made it into something that's pretty, pretty good, pretty decent. I think it's safe to assume that improving matchmaking was a fairly high priority for the team, and hopefully now that it's mostly done, that means that more resources can be spent on the actual game. Maybe that's what caused delays in slightly more sparse content. It's a guess. I recall there being rumors around the time of the spring update that there were some new members of the TF2 team, but as far as I could tell that's entirely unsubstantiated, unfortunately. The uh, apparent understaffment of the dev teams is obviously a problem with Valve and their strange priorities rather than a problem with the TF2 team. But even from a money-making perspective, summer is the time to put out a big update. It's not just that we've come to expect stuff around this time, the player count goes up in summer because it's summer. That's when people are out of school and take vacations and generally have more free time. Unless you're on the southern hemisphere, but they don't count. What I'm getting at is that even though I think late June or early July would be the ideal time to put something out, August is still good, and it could still happen. It might be out right now. Go look! For me, balancing some maps, maybe a new campaign and the usual cosmetic stuff for a major update, it'd be A-OK. -okay. There doesn't need to be a theme or a new gimmick. And what if there were like two popular beta maps that have been 95% complete since 2014? Wouldn't it be crazy if those hypothetical maps were added? It was a big deal just to get CTF well again, finally getting a completed RD asteroid. It'd be great. And when it comes to competitive, I think they'd probably need to add some kind of reward, other than bragging rights. It still has that stigma of not being so great, and if they really want to get it going, there should be something to show for it. Maybe if it was added way back in 2011, there wouldn't need to be, but I think we're past that point, unfortunately. Also, the fact that they've never added any community Man vs. Machine maps still blows my mind. I get why Man vs. Machine would be a lower priority than the main game, but it's been five years since there was any meaningful update to Man vs. Machine, and community map makers have already done most of the work. So what was, uh, what was the point of this video? Uh, I, I guess just don't ring that, uh, no update bell just yet. We're used to having no idea what's gonna happen, but a hint would be nice. I think, should they miss another summer update, it would be a big mistake. Even if whatever they're working on needs to be delayed, there's still plenty of community stuff they could add to fill the time. I think we'd all probably be okay with that, especially if they explained it. But doing nothing? It would be a mistake. I'm still semi-hopeful, but I don't know. It's times like these where it's a little bit weird when it comes to making videos, because I do expect there to be an update at any time. Hey man, I've been playing this game for a long time, and there's always been a summer update. I still expect it, it's like it's burns into my brain. So I never know if I need to throw whatever I'm working on onto the back burner. Hey, hey that's like a weapon. To, to, to make like, a, like an update video or something. And in case you didn't notice, I'm not super fast at making videos. But I do have another thing almost like half written, and a video after that already planned. So even if we don't get an update this August, I at least want to make a bunch of stuff anyways. 
But for now, I'll catch you on the flip side, dude meisters. Peace out.